Yeah, 2023 is where I guess the hope is that we see the bottom, right? You, you want to see some form of meaningful reversal of economic conditions. Today, we interview friend of the channel and crypto expert, Elio Trades, and we talk about what is it going to take in 2023 for the crypto market to reverse. Pay attention to the perspective that Elliot drops about the Fed, about macro, timestamps down below. And then at the very end, this all builds to the question, Bitcoin price prediction by end of year 2023. And so we now know very clearly what was obvious to some maybe economists or those who were in the know, um, but we now see very clearly what drives asset prices, right? It's pure and simple. How much money is there in the markets? And when there's more money in the markets, it's like filling up a bucket of sand. It starts to work its way to the edges, right? Um, and when there's less money in the markets, it gets real dry and real tough at, out at the edges. And so uh, just understand that crypto is at the edges and the more money's in the markets, the more it will flow into crypto. Um, and so until we start seeing more liquidity come into the markets, uh, we shouldn't expect any kind of reversal of this trend. But the benefit of this is understanding that that pretty much means that Bitcoin does exactly what it was programmed to do, which is act as a hedge to monetary debasement, um, not just inflation, right? So now that we're all macro experts, thanks to 2022, we now know there's a difference between inflation and monetary debasement, right? And so what we've seen is that in the times where the dollar is strengthening, which has been throughout the year, right? That's actually not debasing the value of the dollar. They're actually strengthening it. Even though inflation is coming in hot, the actions of the government are to increase the value of the dollar by removing money from the system. So inflation's hot, but the monetary, but the money's being debased at a much slower rate. It's even being reversed, right? And you see that USD versus the currencies, the US dollar has been on a tear, right? And so in a world where the US dollar is on a tear, well, it makes sense that things that trade against the dollar start to weaken. And so what we want to understand is when does the dollar weaken again and and sort of predicting that. And that is essentially the tool that the government uses for everything. It's like uh, Frank's Red Hot. You know, they put that they put that on everything, right? And so um it's just one of those things where we know that it's going to happen again. They can't tighten forever. They need to control inflation, but at a certain point the gig is up and they will start loosening conditions. And so we just need to know one this is literally why Satoshi created Bitcoin, was to protect against monetary debasement. Two, the monetary debasement hasn't been happening in 2022 like it was for the 12 years before it. So it makes sense that asset prices have crashed. And three, it'll happen again. And so understanding that this is why Bitcoin was created, but we can't expect a bottom. And there's no magic number for a bottom. This is why I started my rant. There is no magic number where Bitcoin has to reverse in value. What, what has to be there for Bitcoin to reverse in value is monetary debasement. And so we see the reason why Bitcoin was created, the driver of Bitcoin's value has been kind of absent, right? And so once it returns, which I believe is inevitable, some may disagree, uh, but that's when Bitcoin should resume its upward price trajectory. And I think what people need to understand is it's not a matter of looking at the charts and saying, here's a fractal, here's a this, here's a four-year astrological chart. Like to me, it's just pure and simple. They, they start weakening the dollar again, should be good for Bitcoin. Fed prints, we print, right? When Fed's rugging the markets, it's a good time to be super cautious. Like don't fight the Fed is, is the saying in sort of traditional investment world. It should be a saying here now. It should be, you know, not your keys, not your coins. Don't fight the Fed. You know, just keep it simple, right? You don't need to agonize over every little movement of the market because in reality, that's what Bitcoin was designed to do. It was designed to protect your purchasing power. But when the US dollar is acting to, to protect purchasing power, well, it's probably going to change the dynamic for Bitcoin temporarily. So it's just all about understanding why Bitcoin was designed. And I think... The, the, all these, all this stuff fits very well with sort of the fundamental ethos of why Bitcoin was created. So do I think 9K is possible? I think anything is possible, but it all has to do with what the actions of this centrally planned government monetary policy is, right? It's like a cheesy movie. Like it's like a, it's like, um, like a horror movie where, you know, okay, there's, you're probably pretty sure how this is going to end, right? You could guess pretty quickly how this one's going to end. Um, and so it's just a question of saying, okay, well, when is the killer going to show himself? 
you know, or herself. And, uh, and what's that going to look like? And so we're just waiting for the plot twist. We're waiting for act three. And, uh, and there's no reason to agonize. Just wait for the government to say, hey, we're going to now inflate asset prices and devalue the dollar. And that's a great time to start thinking that there could be a reversal in the markets. Until then, the, the movie script, the playwright, the screenwriter is saying, hey, it's time for asset prices to go down for now. And for those who understand this, these are opportunities to allocate to the market. I haven't been so aggressive yet because to be honest, I don't know how, I don't know how and when the Fed's going to decide to change their policies, but I know that they're going to talk about it loudly and I know they're going to be pretty obvious about it. So there's no reason to be the fastest gun here. I don't think that I need to catch the bottom. I'm just looking to catch and sort of firmly believe that we're in a new cycle. Elliot, let's do a deep dive on Gigamart, Superverse, Imposters, Play to Earn Game. Final question of this interview, though, just for fun. By the end of 2023, the last day, let's say, do you think Bitcoin will be over or under 20K? <laughs> end of 2023? Yes. Oh, my God. So in a year, over or under? Oh, it's so hard. Well, it depends. If they pivot, uh, it'll be over, I think. If they don't pivot, it'll be under. I love it. Elliot, thanks so much, man. <laughs> Links for your stuff are down below. I encourage the audience to stick around for the next interview, possibly link down below for that. Um, but final thoughts in general for the Altcoin Daily Army. Yeah, 2023 is where I guess the hope is that we see the bottom, right? You, you want to see some form of meaningful reversal of economic conditions. Now, I think one of the biggest things that we've seen over 2022 is that the spirit, the sort of degen spirit in the markets really has not left the body yet. And you still see, I mean, you're starting to see it now, but for pretty much the entire year on, you know, all the way through late summer into, you know, Q3, Q4, you saw a ton of optimism on every single pump. Um, and you didn't quite see that, uh, I think, in 2018, uh, back when we met. And I think it was one of those things where the longer that sort of buy the dip mentality goes on, uh, that tends to be the longer the bear market takes to get to its bottom. And one of the things that we've noticed this year, and, and it's been super sobering, and honestly, one of the most enlightening uh, experiences that I've had is to understand where crypto fits in the larger sort of scheme of the economy. And we now see that crypto functions very much so, at least the majority of crypto, there might be a future where Bitcoin doesn't function like this, um, but it functions like a high risk asset. It's a, it's a risk on asset that trades effectively like a higher risk, higher return version of the stock market. And so, you know, in these conditions, we pretty much see that crypto does play very much so along with what the Fed wants to have happen. Uh, this is something that I think is just a great learning for everyone in crypto or everyone who wants to invest in anything uh, to understand where these asset classes sort of function, where they thrive and where they may uh, find themselves receding. Uh, as it pertains to macro policy. And so this is a year where we've gotten a playbook on what happens when liquidity is removed from the markets in general. And in 2020 and 2021, we got the playbook on what happens when liquidity is just dumped into the markets. And so we've seen how it works both ways. And now we're we're sort of looking for, okay, when is the new cycle going to start? Because we've seen, you know, the the macro policy is somewhat predictable. It goes in about 15 year cycles uh, and there's a big washout. And then eventually the policies tighten to control inflation and then they loosen heavily to stimulate the economy. And so we're just waiting to see when that tide shifts and when that tide shifts, uh, hopefully it's here in 2023. Uh, and we can start allocating to a new very long cycle. And maybe this is akin to, you know, the beginnings of Bitcoin and the beginnings of the crypto markets in general, where a whole new cycle will begin.